All right, today we're going to be working on the motion in one dimension uh, worksheet. So I'll be going through this uh, problem by problem. So the first problem says the position of a runner as a function of time is plotted as moving along the x axis of a coordinate system. During a three second time interval, the runner's position changes from x1, 10 meters, to x2, 30.5 meters. What was the runner's average velocity? All right, so first thing we want to do is again list everything we know. Okay, so it gives us the initial position and final position. So I'm going to write that. So I have xi is 10, xf is 30.5. And it says that he does this in a three second time interval. So that gives me my time is three seconds. Uh, last thing I want to do is look for what variable is it at, or what is it asking us to find, which is average velocity. So now my problem's set up. All right. The next thing I want to do is go to my equation sheet. Should be on page two. And from these variables, what equation am I going to use here? Okay. Well, if it's asking for average velocity, okay, which is the, not too often they're going to ask for this, you can use the definition of average velocity, which we've just gone over in the PowerPoint, which will be um, average velocity is delta x over time. Okay. So that's the basic definition of average velocity. Now, remember, you can expand this. This is delta. So in other words, it's xf minus xi. So I can rewrite this as average velocity is equal to xf minus xi all over t. And then all I do is plug in here. V is what I'm looking for. xf is 30.5 minus 10 divided by 3. Do the algebra, and you should get somewhere between 6.83 meters per second. All right. Let's go on to number two. It says, how far can a cyclist travel in 2.5 hours along a straight road if her velocity is 18 kilometers per hour? All right. So, in reading this, you'll notice some things about the variables here. So let's go ahead and first off pull out what we know. So it gives us a time. It says 2.5 hours. So this is number two. So time equals 2.5 hours. Well, if you notice, hours is not our base units. So again, we need to convert that to use it. So I want to get rid of hours, so I put it on the bottom, I'll go to minutes. I know one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Hours cancel out. I want to get rid of minutes. Remember, my base unit for time is seconds. So minutes go on the bottom, seconds go on top. Minutes cancel out. I know one minute is equal to 60 seconds. I'm good. I, I got seconds here. So what you do is, anything on top you multiply, anything on the bottom you divide. Well, there's really nothing on the bottom here, so what I'm going to do is multiply across. 2.5 times 60 times 60 gives me um, 9,000 seconds. Alright, so that's my time. Then it gives me average velocity, saying that her velocity is 18 kilometers per hour. So average velocity is 18 kilometers per hour. Well, if you notice there, both length and time are not in base units, right? Our base units for length is meters, and our base units for time, like above, is seconds, all right? So let's go ahead and convert that. Let's change the distance first, the, the length. So I want to get rid of kilometers, so I'm going to put it opposite, which means the bottom. I'm going to go to meters. I know one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Kilometers cancel out. Okay. Now I want to get rid of hours. I put it opposite. So if hours are on the bottom, I want to get rid of it. I have to put it on the top. I know minutes. I know one hour 
is equal to 60 minutes. Hours cancel out, I'm off with minutes. I need to change that to seconds. So I go ahead and do another step. I need to get rid of minutes, it's on the bottom, so I put it opposite to get rid of it. Minutes on the bottom, minutes go on top, they cancel out. I'm going to seconds. One minute, 60 seconds. I'm left with meters per second, in other words, my base unit for velocity. So once I do that, I multiply anything on the top, so I do 18 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60, which gives me 5 meters per second. Right? Now, when I read the problem, it says how far. All right? When I think about that, how far, I'm looking for length, how far the cyclist has traveled. So the variable that represents length is delta x. So I'm looking for delta x here. All right? Again, I'm dealing with average velocity. I'll use my average velocity definition. Average velocity equals delta x over t. I can plug in. V is 5, delta X is what I'm looking for, and time is 9,000. To solve, I multiply by 9,000, cancels out, 9,000, I get delta X is equal to 45,000 meters. Alright? Alright, so let's go ahead on to uh, number three. It says a car accelerates along a straight road to 75 kilometers per hour in five seconds. What is the magnitude of its average acceleration? Okay, let's go ahead and do this one here. So, number three. So we're going to assume the car starts from rest, right? So when we draw this picture here, it's going down the road, it starts from rest, so I know VI at this point is zero. It gets to a velocity, velocity final of 75 kilometers per hour, and the time it takes is five seconds. So I, I built that picture just based upon what I read here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is list my notes kind of what I've already done here, but list form, VI equals zero, VF equals 75 kilometers per hour, and if you notice here, we're not in base units again, okay? So what we need to do is figure out how to convert this again. So again, I'll do the same steps here. I'll do it quickly here. Kilometers, I get rid of it, goes on the bottom, one kilometer, 1,000 meters, cancels out, cancels out. I'll get rid of hours, I'll put it on top. I know how many seconds are in an hour. You can look that up or it's on your equation sheet. One hour is 3600 zero, zero seconds, 3,600 seconds. That just saves me one step, okay? Multiply whatever's on top, divide what's ever on the bottom, and I get, um, ooh, let me do that real quick. Let's see, 75 times 1,000. divided by 3,600. Okay, 20.83. And that's meters per second. Uh, and it gives me that it's in five seconds, so time is five seconds. I'm looking for what is the acceleration of the car. So I'm looking for A. So now what you want to do is go to your equation sheet that you have here and go down these lists of equations and figure out which variable has all four of those variables in it and that's it, okay? So basically you want the one that does not have delta x in it. When I look at this, okay, the first equation is delta x vit plus one half at squared. Well, it has delta x, can't use it. Next one, vf equals vi plus at. Perfect, I can use that. So I write it out. vf equals vi plus at. I can plug in now. VF is 20.83. VI is 0 plus AT5. So that 0 goes away. 
doesn't really come into effect here. So if I want to solve for A, I need to move the 5 to the other side. So I divide by 5, divide by 5, and the acceleration that I get when I solve this is... Twenty point eight three divided by five gives me four point one one seven meters per second squared. Okay. Now let's go on to number four. So there's all the work. Picture next step. This is your Q kind of. This is the expand and Q, and then I pick the equation and solve for there. All right. Number four. Number four says, if the velocity of an object is zero, does it mean that it has that the acceleration is zero? If the acceleration is zero, does it mean the velocity is zero? Provide example. So let's, let's look at the first one. It says, if the velocity of an object is zero, does it mean that the acceleration is zero? Um, so when looking at that, that means velocity is zero. It's not moving. Does the object have acceleration? Well, there's one point in particular that this happens, okay? When you throw an object up, okay, if you throw something up, all right, think about it. What's it under influence the entire time? It's under, oh, sorry, I thought it stopped recording. It's under gravity the entire time, right? So it's the same exact gravitational force that causes acceleration the entire time. Well, if you think about it, when it reaches its highest point, its velocity reaches zero, okay? So yes, it can have a zero velocity at the highest point, but still have an acceleration, the acceleration of gravity pulling back down. The next one says, if the acceleration